what figures to be a very special moment when Billy Martin is introduced to the fans who have loved him so over the years and stuck with him through his troubles, Billy Martin as the manager of the Oakland A's. Number one, Billy Martin. His coach, number 31, Pete Boyer. In the bullpen, number to the, 42. To the campaneris Legro incident and the Chambliss home run, we can now add another special moment, the reappearance of Billy Martin in the LCS. We'll talk of Billy, Reggie, and George when we come back. They have for him, even though the years for Billy have been controversial wins, he has always been a crowd favorite, but certainly the last five years have been tumultuous. Billy Martin's been a favorite in New York since the day he broke in as a Yankee rookie in 1950, so he was a logical choice to take over the managing chores in 1975. Though his career was already steeped in controversy, it got more controversial with the adding of Reggie Jackson a year later. The reason why that I'm a Yankee is because George Steinbrenner out hustled everybody else. George may have out-hustled everybody else to get Reggie, but Billy's perception of how much Reggie hustled tended to vary at times. There was a famous incident in Fenway Park where Billy pulled Reggie off the field, and the two almost came to blows in the Fenway Park dugout before they were separated by coaches. Still on the field between them, Billy Martin, Reggie Jackson, and George Steinbrenner brought Magic back to New York and brought a championship flag back to New York in 1977. But the very next year, Billy ran into problems. Reggie was benched from time to time. And then in Kansas City, Billy referred to his boss and Reggie by saying one is a liar and the other's convicted. And he was fired on the 24th of July, 1978. Five days later, George Steinbrenner stunned the baseball world by announcing at an old-timer's day that Billy Martin would return to manage the Yankees in 1980. But after the Yankees started slowly in 1979, George Steinbrenner saw fit to reunite his star slugger with his star manager. And in June of 79, Billy Martin was brought back prematurely to the applause of the crowd, only to be fired again that October. In February of 1980, Billy signed on to manage the Oakland A's, and he's changed the fortunes of the Oakland Ball Club. Controversial as he may be, Billy has always won wherever he's gone. He won in Minnesota, Detroit, New York. He won also with the Yankees and now with the A's. And with the A's bringing him to this point, it may be his greatest achievement because they lost over 100 games just two years ago. But he's done it with Billy Ball. He walks off of third base, cool and slow. Everybody in the park knows he's going to go. Billy Ball, A's baseball. Billy Ball, A's baseball. He's going to get home. Just you wait and see. Everybody trying to pick off me. Pulling double steel, playing hit and run. He caught in the catcher, it's funky, but it's fun. Billy Ball, A's baseball. Billy Ball. <laughs> You blew that call. Get back in the dugout. He's going to get in trouble. Just you wait and see. Get out of here. Why is everybody always picking on me? The Yankees and the A's have yet to throw a pitch in anger in this series. But already a controversy is brewing. We'll get to that right after this. Art Fowler have gone. Sure to follow have been the accusations that Billy's pitcher tend to wet the ball up a little bit. With that in mind, George Steinberg and Billy Martin met with American League President Lee McPhail yesterday, and Lee McPhail met in turn with the umpires in tonight's game, including home plate umpire Nick Bremigan. What went on in the meeting, Nick? Basically, it was just a meeting to say we're going to run everything like we do during the season. That if we find any evidence of any pitcher doing anything illegal with a baseball, uh, we have the right to take the baseball, uh, use the rule that's in the rule book, and enforce it the same way we did during the season. Some have said it's not a question of if you'll ask for the baseball, simply when. Do you buy that? No, I think a, a lot of this has been a, a controversy started by the press and by Steinbrenner and by Martin, and of course the umpires as usual are in the middle of the thing. Uh, we just have to do our job the same way we've been doing it all year, Brian. Now, if I see something suspicious, I'll act. In an effort to help the fans at home, I want you to take this from me. How can a fan sitting at home recognize a ball that's been, that's been tampered with? Basically, what they'll do is they'll either cut the ball up in this area right here, 
or put something on it either over in the corner here or over in the corner here. But as the here. fan watches the ball approach the plate, what will happen? What will happen is the ball theoretically should sink, and it should sink rather rapidly. Now, most pitchers, including Tommy John and North, have very good sinkers, which are legitimate pitchers. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough thing for a fan at home on TV to be watching and to really uh, decide because it's tough for the umpire right here in the ballpark. I'm sure it is. Nick, good luck to you. Okay. Thank, thank you me. very much. And so we are set. It is the Yankees versus the A's in a best of five series. And Billy Martin and George Steinbrenner, you can be sure all eyes will be on them because whatever you may think of them, love them or hate them, there is no middle ground for either man. And whatever you may think of them, the record proves their point to Reggie. And it's almost like the game is insignificant. In fact, I think Greg Nettles put it best when he said, most kids when they're growing up think about being either a baseball player or joining the circus. I'm lucky, I got both. But we are gonna have a game here tonight. It'll be Norris for the Oakland A's and Tommy John for the Yankees. Billy Ball, how many times have we heard that? I think Billy Ball is the greatest piece of managerial gamesmanship in the history of the game. I Billy, Billy gets them thinking about everything but the Oakland A's. Every time a man gets on third base, he might steal. It's gonna be a squeeze play. First and second double steal. To me, Billy Ball simply is a man who went out and taught a young Oakland A's team what his second father taught him. Casey Stengel taught Billy Martin how to play baseball. Billy taught that young Oakland A's outfield to throw to the right base, to play in proper position. He takes the heat off their backs. If they get thrown out of the base, I'll take the heat. He has the opposition hitters thinking more about spitballs and grease balls and soap balls than he does about getting base hits. If the Yankees focus on Billy Ball, the Oakland beat A's could beat them, but I really think overall the Yankees are so overpowering, they could, they could blow this Oakland team away. When the, you talk to the Oakland A's, they say what Billy has done to the young players is taken the fear out and put confidence in. But like you say, he has them thinking. Today in the paper, it was like the Yankees didn't even have a manager. Well, another man that I think is very big, we haven't heard Bob Lemon's name. We haven't heard Dave Winfield's name. Dave Winfield can beat you with his glove, his bat, his legs. He's coming into this thing, not getting the publicity that Reggie has or many other players, but he's coming with a tremendous intensity. He could come up being the star of the series. I'd say it. This whole, this whole before the game kind of thing, the hype, the newspapers, everywhere you go, it is Billy, George, and Reggie. But Tommy John, if he's got his good stuff, will throw ground balls. And if Mike Norris has his good stuff, you'll see a pretty good screwball. Well, you've got Mike Norris, and there are really not any starting pitchers for the Oakland A's who are left-handed. But Reggie Jackson in your picture right now is a man who they will pitch around. Billy said to the press yesterday when asked the question, what are you going to do with Mr. October? What about the Jackson mistake? He said, we're going to go right after Reggie Jackson. You don't go right after Reggie Jackson in October. He showed that to Milwaukee. He showed it to other ball clubs, even though he had a poor year. They're going to try and pitch, I believe, around Reggie Jackson. That means the man hitting in front of him, Dave Winfield, could get better pitches to hit. Tony, as we look at Billy Martin, the Billy ball, they talk about stealing home. He tried it seven times with his team. Unsuccessful. Didn't steal home once yet. Everybody talks about it. And they led the American League in home runs, so that's good old-fashioned baseball. Well, that's that, that statistic that doesn't show up. The Yankees have a lot of power. As a team, they have not been hitting. The games they've been winning recently have been with a home run. The Jackson home run, the Gamble home run against Milwaukee. The Yankees can run, too. Billy, he has instilled in this team a kind of swagger, a swashbuckling style. They came out to the ballpark yesterday for the workout. None of the press were talking to the players. They were all talking to Billy. On the other side, they were talking to all the players and none talking to Bob Lemon. But the team swaggers when it comes in. They have very much confidence. They typify the personality of their manager, which I think most teams ultimately do, and their manager is Billy Martin. And he, he lets that be known. We're waiting for Tommy John, and there you see him coming in from the bullpen. Tommy John, who, what a tremendous story uh, he is, not only the fact that his little boy Travis is all right, and he'll be here watching this game. But the operation, that seemed to drift in insignificance. Uh, nobody thought he would come back, even the doctor who operated on him. Dr. Joe, when he performed the surgery, was ever, first ever done on any athlete. He took a tendon out of Tommy John's right forearm, put it in his left elbow, and told him very simply, Tommy, you will never pitch again. Tommy proved him wrong. He's the winningest pitcher in the American League over the last three years. And as Clyde King with him, he will throw the sinker ball. You must be a very disciplined hitter against Tommy John because he will go from the knees to the ankles. And the more you chase, the lower he's going to go. He'll throw a lot of ground balls, as they say. And that operation, when 
Tommy explains it. He said it's just like your garden hose when it has a kink in it. There's no force at the nozzle, and his kink was in his elbow. They took it out, and he's been able to win a lot of ball games in both leagues. So he'll be the pitcher for the New York Yankees. Mike Norris with a real good screwball, a pretty good-looking pitcher. Well, Mike Norris is the man they've accused most specifically of all on this team of doctoring a baseball. We'll try and keep our cameras for you fans, and you try and pick something up. The hitters complain. But Mike Norris is almost like a left-handed uh, pitcher because with that screwball and about five left-handed hitters for the Yankees, he can make them look awfully bad. What they've been accused of is the pitcher's putting soap on the right hand, uh, the pant leg here, and then rubbing the ball against the pant leg and loading it up that way. Uh, they use sandpaper. Uh, some just use good old, uh, old-fashioned spit. I remember kidding Drysdale. Well, it's crude, <laughs> but I remember Drysdale one day threw one. You could see the rainbow from the mound to home plate. So. The thing about it, Joe, and again, this is Billy Ball again. This is gamesmanship. Whether they throw it or not, and right. some obviously do, the hitters are thinking that they throw it, and that gives the guy an extra pitch. It does. If you get a hitter thinking about anything else but what he's doing, you're ahead of the game. Well, the Yankees are taking the field. We're getting ready for baseball. Now let's go to Bob Shepard for our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise? We direct your attention to the microphone near home plate. Now, to honor America, let's join Robert Merrill as he sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming, and the rockets reclare the bombs bursting in air gave through through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled man know yet wave on the land of the free and the hope of the the playing of the national anthem sung by Robert Merrill. We're getting ready for baseball and we'll be right back. It is a curveball strike on Ricky Henderson. We'll be playing left field. There's the lineup. Henderson in left field. Murphy in center field. Cliff Johnson, the designated hitter. Armas is in right field. Klutz at third. Moore's at first. Newman's a catcher. Strike two. Dave McKay is at second base. And Rob Pichelot will be the shortstop. There you see it. The pitcher Norris. The D.H. Cliff Johnson. Henderson, two quick strikes. Had six home runs, 35 runs batted in, hit 319 on the regular season. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Tommy John, one nine, lost eight. 2.63 earned run average. Out remains at one ball, two strikes. Tommy averaged 3.2 strikeouts for nine innings. He walked 2.5 for nine innings. You see by the first swing of the ball game by an Oakland eight, tried to hit Tommy John the opposite field. Henderson just did. Cliff Johnson, a former Yankee and teammate of Johnson, had a separate meeting with a lot of the Oakland A's hitters on how to hit. There's Cliff, how to hit Tommy John. He said you gotta be very disciplined and you've got to hit the ball in the right center field or down the right field line, or at least try to. on Ricky Henderson, born on Christmas Day, 1958, in Chicago, Illinois, now lives in Oakland, A's number four selection in the 1976 free agent draft. Bouncing ball to Randolph, one out. A good crowd on hand, the batter is Wayne Murphy. With 15 home runs, with 60 runs batted in. 251 average, 
on the regular season. This young man is an exceptional all-around player. Throwing, running, hitting for power. He will walk. There's the strike. Born in Merced, California, now lives in San Ramon, California. He's number two pick in the June 1973 free agent draft. One ball and one strike. Dodgers beat the Expos, and now the Yankees and the Oakland A's go at it for the American League pennant. Two balls and one strike. You'll see that face a lot in this telecast. Billy doesn't move around the dugout, but he'll be flashing signs constantly. High hopper, Bob Watson. So they're two away, nobody on. Cliff Johnson, the batter, who had 17 home runs, 59 runs better than, hit 260 on the year. A big guy, 6'5, 225, born in San Antonio, where he still lives. He may be the counterpart of Dave Winfield in this series, although even though he's a DH, will only do it with a bat. But the plan of the Yankees is to not let Tony Armas hurt them. Cliff Johnson probably will play if it goes five, all five games, because the Yankee pitching times at this point are to go with five left-handed pitchers in this series. The A's got Johnson from the Chicago Cubs along with Keith Drumright in exchange for Mike King. And if he takes a swing in a fastball, you'll see as good a swing as there is in baseball. He really goes around on it. He's taking a pitch all the way, ball one. Eight of his ten seasons, Johnson has reached double figures in home runs. He's not a ping hitter. He goes for the downs. One ball and one strike. Two outs. Nobody on. Ball game underway. A good crowd on hand here at Yankee Stadium. Johnson, the man who a former Yankee who, when he had a playful little fight with Goose Gossage, injured Gossage, and Mr. Steinbrenner set him off. I think that the least talked about subject was baseball. How do you feel Billy coming back? What about Reggie? What about George? A lot of, lot of extracurricular activities surrounding this game. One ball, two strikes. The right-handed hitting lineup for the Oakland A's when they face left-handed pitchers is a stronger hitting lineup. But there's Bob Levitt, Mike Ferraro to the left. But Yankee Stadium is Death Valley in left center field. So the left-handed pitcher can say, here, hit it. that he will face leading off Jerry Mumphrey in center field. Larry Milburn, what a job he has done since replacing the injured Bucky Dent. Milburn will be a shortstop. Dave Winfield in left field batting third. Reggie Jackson in the cleanup spot in right field. Oscar Gamble is the designated hitter. Greg Nettles will be at third base. The first baseman is Bob Watson. Rick Cerrone, the catcher, batting eighth, and Willie Randolph batting ninth. And that's the lineup that Bob Lemon shook up a little bit, Tony. Yeah, moving Randolph in that last game against Milwaukee to the nine spot. Willie's had a rough year. Mike Norris, 12 and nine on the season. Did not have a very good second half until, well, the last two ball games he's pitched, he threw shutouts. One of the reasons he's thrown a few more fastballs, although he can go through an entire ball game and seven of 10 pitches will be the screwball or what some hitters say that other funny looking thing. Well, we'll see. Third baseman Klutz moves in close for Jerry Mumphrey. Mumphrey 6'1", 185. It's a ball. Born in Tyler, Texas, still lives there. He came over from the San Diego Padres, along with John Pacella for Rupert Jones, Joe LaFay, 
Tim Lawler and Chris Welsh. One ball, one strike on Mumphrey. Mike Norris. 12 and 9 on the year. Fouled out of play, and it's one ball and two strikes. Mike Norris, as a kid, a teenager, in fact, came up for the Oakland A's under Alvin Dark. First outing, pitched a shutout. Very important in that Oakland ball club. Then he hurt his elbow. The bone chips removed, calcium deposits. They thought his career might be over. He's battled back. Scoop ball, ball, and oh, he yeah. got him. That's that breaking pitch, and there they go asking the umpire about that pitch. Could be the ask if it was a strike. Okay, but just you wonder if he wasn't setting something okay, up. We'll we'll show you the last pitch of the ball. He changed his feet for him. Number 18. Fools hitters almost as much or more as does the action on the ball. So there's one away. The batter is Milburn. Time is called now. Something on the field in left center field. Milburn, born in Fort Norris, New Jersey, now lives in Kirkland, Washington. He came from the Seattle Mariners for Brad Goulden and Cash in November of 1980. He has really done a job, this fella. It is low, ball one. Klutz moves in on the grass, very tight at third base. There you see him. Milburn, four hits in his last five at bats. Right field base hit. And that brings up Dave Winfield, who should get a big hand in this almost capacity crowd, if not a capacity crowd. Number 31. Winfield, 13 home runs, 68 runs batted in, hit 294 on the year. They talk again about Billy Ball and the speed on this Oakland ball club. Uh, the Yankees have some players can run. Bumpy, of course, who made out. There's Billy. Milborn, he might take a chance. Winfield can steal. Jackson might surprise you. Randolph down at the end of the lineup. So there is a possibility we could see more running by the Yankees than by the Oakland A. We'll see how the series develops. One man out. Mike Norris against Dave Winfield. Milburn at first. First baseman, Kelvin Moore. Strike. A bat. Mike Norris, a superb athlete. One of the best fielding pitchers in the American League. Winfield waiting. Norris taking plenty of time, checking that runner. Slow curveball. One ball and one strike. That last pitch, the slow curve and the fastball are pitches that Norris used a little bit more late in the season. He fell in love with the screwball. Inside, two balls and a strike. Winfield is 6-6. 220 as we look at Reggie Jackson. Born in St. Paul, now lives in San Diego. He was signed as a free agent for a ton and a half of money. With or without inflation, he got a lot. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Do something off speed, even though Whitfield is ahead of the count 2 and 1. Boyer, Billy Martin, and Art Fowler. Billy saying some of the umpire, Nick Bremigan. Fowler, the pitching coach, very simple in his directions to his pitchers. You can't catch a walk. Throw strikes is what he tells him. 
You'll see a lot of first pitch strikes. But Norris is behind three and one here. Walkie. And that brings up Reggie Jackson. Norris trying to reach back for something extra on the 3-1 pitch. Hard fastball over through it. Got away from it. Second baseman McKay has just talked to his shortstop Pichelo. There's one man out. Reggie had 15 home runs, drove in 54 runs on a regular season, had a 237 batting average. Joe Altabelli way out of the coach's box. Norris averaged 3.3 walks per nine innings, but he did have 14 wild pitches, the most in the American League. He hit 10 batters, which placed him second. Steve had 11. Witt hit 11. 2-0. And, oh, and now here comes the Billy Martin. Well, Billy got the cheers that you heard during Brian's Bumble's pregame show, and he took the field. He's getting some booze now. I'll tell you, the directions right here will be direct and forthright, and it'll go back to what I said a moment ago. Art Fowler passes on. You can't catch a walk, and you start falling behind the Reggie Jackson's two balls and no strikes, where he can look for a pitch. They'll drive it into the next county. Two balls, no strikes, one out. No burners on it. The second, Winfield is on it first. We have no score in the bottom of the first. And there you see the runners, Winfield. Off speed. Screwball. Big pitch. Gutty pitch. Two balls and a strike to count. Fleet Boyer. Billy Martin. Art Fowler. The inset. Another screw ball, and it's two balls and two strikes. Reggie trying to put three quick ones on the scoreboard. Mike Norris has come back. Look at Reggie watching uh, Norris. Talking to the umpire, you asked for the ball, Reg. Norris walked off the dirt surface and went to his forehead, his cap. Could be two. There's one. Throw. Not in time. There was a case where one of the intangibles of Dave Whitfield comes into play. Good play by Dave McKay. Watch Whitfield take out Pizzolo. He put enough pressure on him that he couldn't quite get enough on the ball, and Reggie really hustled it out. Here comes the takeout to left center field. And you know Pizzolo sees Winfield coming. His big, long stride, Reggie beats it out. Big as Winfield is, 6'6", 220. That's got to be like the 5'15 coming down at you. He bobbled the ball just slightly when he first got it, and then with McKay, and when he gave it to Pichelo, Pichelo could hear the thundering herd, and he didn't quite, quite get the good stuff on it. So there are two outs, and here is Oscar Gamble, who has 10 home runs, 27 runs batted in. He looks for that ball inside, so he can hit it down the right field line, which is only 310. Good low ball hitter. Strike. At third base, Milburn. At first base, Reggie Jackson. Two outs. No score. They are not holding Reggie on down at first base. Delvin Moore will back off for the pitch. There goes Reggie. They'll not make a play. Oh. 
Reggie has a chance to show you a little smarts right here in his experience. He has been a base stealing stealer in his career. But he saw that Moore, even though there's a left-handed hitter up, he knew he had it made with a head first slide. They gave him those extra two slips by not holding him close. One ball and one strike to count on Oscar Gamble. Milburn to third, Jackson at second. Low. Two balls in the strike. The on-deck batter is Greg Nettles. There you see him. Ted Reggie getting down there, not only is a single score two, but he takes that force out away. Put some pressure on an infielder. Two balls and two strikes on Oscar Gamble. Jackson at second. Milburn at third. Oscar Gamble would have to hit a bullet to get us to the right side of that infield. McKay and Calvin Moore really closing that gap. Gamble the pull hitter he is. Foul ball out of play. McKay, who is kind of ambling over to second base now, will move closer in the hole. He will play the count very well. Dave McKay does not have a whole lot of speed. He's been a maligned open infield. Look at their two shortstops, though. Picciolo and Stanley. They've been just eight airs all season long, and McKay is very steady. Down the left field line, a screw ball, but it's a foul ball. He changes speeds on so many pitches, and his screwball, when Keo, his fellow pitcher, talks about it, he says that the spin on the screwball is so tight and the motion so fast that he's, for all intents, a left-hander throwing right-handed. But he also changes speeds. Joe, he's one of the guys who benefited from having elbow surgery. When we first saw him, when he came up as a teenager under Alvin Dark, he threw a fastball slider. When he hurt his arm, he had to learn to throw off-speed pitches, and he learned the screwball. There it is. He missed. And it's three and two. something off and you could see that Norris thought he was going to get it by Gamble. It's the old Johnny Saint here and I think Art Fowler believes the same theory. If you can get off speed stuff over the plate and you're behind the hitter on a three and two count, you can win in the big leagues. Well, I'll tell you, Tony, Johnny Saint maybe be the latest, but that thing's been around, you know, throw something beside the fastball to a, a hitter two and oh, three and one. Really makes the difference. Here's a three two pitch. Walk team, bases are loaded. Greg Nettles the batter. Norris, who averages 3.3 walks, has walked two men in this inning. And Nettles, with 15 home runs, 46 runs batted in, hit 244 on the regular season. As we look at Bob Lemon. Every hitter in this Yankee lineup makes a pitcher work, doesn't it? You can't just lay the ball in down the middle. Strike. This is definitely a pitcher's ballpark. And big right center and left center as you look at it. But the pitcher has to be careful down that right field line. 310. Get that ball inside. Two strikes on Greg Nettles. Against Milwaukee in the miniseries, Nettles was one for 17, one run scored, .059 average. So he has been cold. In this ballpark, Nettles is as much a threat as any Yankee hitter because he pulls the ball all as consistently as Gamble. Left center field, no one will get this one. It'll be extra bases. 
One run in. Two runs in. Gamble's going to try to score. Here's the throw. They got a chance. He's in there. Three runs in. This is a marvelous piece of hitting. You don't see Greg Nettles give in too often and go with a pitch like that. But he took a screwball a little up in the strike zone, but might have been six inches off the plate outside. And he just served it out. Here comes the throw. Very dangerous slide by Oscar Gamble, but he jar jars Newman loose. So the Yankees have cashed in on a... Three RBI double by Greg Nettles. The bases on balls have come home to score. Here is Bob Watson. Hi, ball one. And Joe, that windfield pressure on the ground ball, a possible double play ball, will go overlooked in the box scores tomorrow. But that could have been a very important slide by Winfield. One ball, one strike. I tell you, the papers have been full of the clubhouse meeting that George Steinbrenner had, and whether they want to admit it or not, I see a lot of head-first sliding. <laughs> Jackson head-first in the second base. Oscar Gamble head-first in the home plate. That's always dangerous. Curveball hangs high. Two balls, one strike. And the man who was the biggest target in that tirade by Steinbrenner is the on-deck batter, Rick Zerone. Curving foul. Nettles at second base. Bob Watson against Milwaukee was seven for 16, a 438 average. Scored two runs, drove in one, so he was a hot hitter during the miniseries. On the year, he had six home runs with 12 runs batted in. Norris has thrown a lot of pitches this inning. Misses three balls and two strikes. Yankees, after Mumphrey was out on strikes, Milburn single, Winfield walked, Jackson hit a ground ball, looked like a double play, but as Tony said, Winfield put some pressure, it was only a force out. Gamble walked, and Nettles doubled. Deep to left center field, going back Murphy, Henderson. Murphy makes the play out there in Death Valley. 430 feet from home plate, and it is really Death Valley here at Yankee Stadium, both in right field, right center and left center. Long out ends the inning at the end of one complete inning. Yankees three, Oakland nothing, Armas, Clutch, and more. Baseball, Reggie Jackson, ever since a trip to Chicago, the fans throw money. He's picking some up. The groundkeeper, he made about, I bet you made six, eight dollars there. Didn't he have a day where he said he made almost eighty dollars? Did I read that correctly? Ground crew, they love him for that. Who said there's an economic crisis and unemployment is high in the world? <laughs> Look at him. Whoop, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> he saw, whoop, oh, no, I'll get him to the next inning. <laughs> so we go to the second inning here. And Tony Armas will lead it off. Yankees leading three to nothing. Antonio Rafael Armas, born in Venezuela, he still lives there. Came over from the Pittsburgh Pirates along with Doc Medich, Dave Justy, Doug Bear, Rick Lanford, and Mitchell Page in exchange for Tommy Helms, Bill Gardner, and Chris Batten. What a trade. There's a base hit. Armas is on. So these Oakland A's come roaring back. Well, you wonder what happens to Billy Ball when you're three run down. You can't afford to take a whole lot of chances. You're playing a veteran ball club. Middle infielders like Willie Randolph and Watson. And first Nettles, very alert. Well, they were, didn't wait for the first pitch, but John is not a, a wild, uh, doesn't have a reputation for being wild, so he jumped right on the first strike. Armas is on, plus the batter. Inside, ball one. Clutch played for the Yankees in 1976, 78. 
He was the number four pick in the 1972 free agent draft. It is low. Tommy John can go through the course of a ball game if he finishes a nine inning game and throw up 15 or more ground balls. Oh, foul. So the Oakland A's are not waiting. They know John's not going to walk too many. So Armas jumped on the first pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Klutz went to work. You'll see some good plays behind Tommy John because he's around the plate. He works fairly fast. He needs no scouting report either. He pitches the same pattern against everybody. Down, low and away to right-handers. Off the glove. Nettles can't make a play. And the A's have two base runners on. Nobody out. And Kelvin Moore is the batter. Sinker ball. Tommy John gets it on the ground. He got a little bit up, and Klutz went with the ball very well. Milburn was not going to have a play. It was going to go through anyway. Here's a young kid that's got some home run power, and it is to right field. It's like the first swing of the bat yesterday in batting practice in Yankee Stadium. Get the ball out in right center field. Get that swing inside out and go with a pitcher like Tommy John. This could be two. Randolph, one over to first. Pulls Watson off the bag. It's only a force play with Armas taking third. Mickey Klutz, the former Yankee, has the ball handcuffs Willie Randolph. Milburn, Klutz really goes after him. As soon as Willie had to back up on the play, five. got the ball jammed Jeff in his Newman. stomach. He couldn't get a real strong throw Catch. to Milburn. Number five. So Klutz takes him out of a double play with the takeout. Nettles wants to talk to Tommy John now. Newman is the batter. Don't know if they would do it now, three runs down. He may be reminding Tommy John the Oakland A's have a play where the runner on first base takes the lead off and stumbles and pretends he falls. As silly as it sounds, it's worked successfully. I don't know how many times in the last couple of years. The pitcher throws the first, and the guy from third just walks on in. It's referred to as a high school play, but it puts numbers on the board. Newman fouls it off, strike one. Newman, born in Fort Worth, now lives in Danville, California. He came over from the Cleveland Indians in 1975. 6 2 2 10. He's Jeff playing, Newman. He's playing today instead of Heath because he hit this Yankee staff pretty well, or he has recently. There's Armas at third. One strike to count. Three nothing to score. Yankees. Bouncing ball. Nettles to second. One out. Over to first. Low throw. Watson gets a double play. Nice play by Bob Watson at first base. What an advantage for shortstop to have a man like Greg Meadows. Look how far to, far to his left he went to get that ball. Feeds the ball to Randolph perfectly about belt high. It was really nice. Watson snaps it out of the dirt. You might have noticed on that play as Watson with the pickup, a good play, that there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on the infielder in the middle of that double play, and it might have made a difference. So we go to the bottom of the second. Willie in every ballpark in America as we look at Rick Cerrone. Ball one. He's been playing under some extra pressure had to have protection threatening letter yeah he's a friend of his who's a detective staying with him I guess that's part of the price you pay for fame it's a strike one ball and one strike Cerrone two home runs 21 runs batted in at 244 born in Newark now lives in Fort Lee. Outside. He came over from the Toronto Blue Jays along with Tom Underwood and Ted Wilburn for Chris Shambliss, Paul Mirabella, and Damaso Garcia. Hot smash right at the third baseman Klutz. Nice play. That ball was hit right on the button. Mickey Klutz, the former member of the Yankees. Knock it down at third base and throw him out. The man at third base probably has to have the quickest reflexes of any player in the field. Don't get much of a chance to make up your mind. So there's one out. Willie Randolph is the batter. Hits the first pitch deep to right center field. Armas and Murphy. And Murphy makes the play. They were both there. It looked like a collision. 
Nice play by Murphy. He has made two catches, Murphy. One off Watson, the left center field in front of the 430 sign. And one in right center field, and he plays a very shallow center field. From where he started, there are very few center fielders in the American League, and maybe baseball, who could have caught them. Some say the best outfield in baseball. Well, you've seen two catches by Murphy right now that would be difficult to argue with. Tony, Jim Russo, the super scout for the Baltimore Orioles, says that no outfield plays shallower, and no outfield can go into the power alleys with them. And he's talking about this Oakland A's outfield of Henderson, Murphy, and Armas. It is ball one. Two balls that were just crushed off Norris. First two batters. Mumphrey, one ball to count. The aerial view of Yankee Stadium. As the Oakland A's and the New York Yankees now battle for the American League pennant. Tommy John against Dave McKay. Is there a more beautiful ballpark in America? This is a beauty. It really is. The house that Ruth built. Tradition everywhere. There is some of the monuments in center field. Ruth, Garrick, Huggins, the Pope has a plaque there. DiMaggio, Mantle, Ford. Ball one. That's the longest anybody ever stayed at second base when the Pope got here. Down the right field line, a foul ball. One ball and one strike. McKay, born in Vancouver, British Columbia, now lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. He came over as a free agent in 1980 to the Oakland A's. Had a shot with Minnesota. Toronto picked him up. He's a switch hitter. He's been hitting very well the last month of the season. He's never hit much in the big leagues. Two balls and one strike. The Yankees are leading three to nothing. We're in the top of the third. Big three run first. Greg Nettles with the bases loaded a double. Well hit right field. Reggie Jackson's there. One out. Well, Yogi's moving the outfielders in the right place so far. <laughs> Pitch him away. Play him away. Did very well. Peter Lowe. Shortstop. Number eight. They want Reggie to stay in New York. I tell you, these papers here are really something. Everybody has an in-depth column. Bunt it down the third baseline, strike one. Will Reggie stay? Will he go? Over the last 30 games or so, Reggie's had uh, kind of his official countdown as to how many games left in the Yankee uniform. He said before this started, he said, the maximum number of games I think I'll be in the Yankee uniform is now down to 12. If it goes five in the League Championship Series, and if we play in the World Series, it could be seven. He's saying now it's 99% sure I will be leaving. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Pichelo, born in Santa Monica, now lives in Redondo Beach, California. He doesn't get it. One ball, two strikes. He was the A's number one selection in the January 1975 free agent draft, the secondary phase. Went to Santa Monica City College in Pepperdine. Pepperdine with good baseball. He doesn't get it out on strikes. That's the second strikeout for Tommy Johns. Swinging a low pitch, it'll go even lower. Well, Ricky Henderson, we've seen a couple of good catches. Ricky Henderson, the left fielder, Dwayne Murphy, finished one, two, and put outs. Against Texas, Buddy Ball at the plate. We get a chance to see the speed of Ricky Henderson in the Let's Oakland Coliseum going to the Ricky warning track, to the wall. Henderson. It is a super outfield. Cleet Boyer talks about him, and Lee Walls is the outfield coach. He really works with him. Fungo after fungo after fungo. Line foul. For charging the ball and holding the runners, Armas, Murphy, and Henderson, according to Boyer and Lee Walls, are the best in the American League. You can't really argue with him. Two years ago and last year, Joe, they rated his throwing arm, Henderson, as less than average. But he started playing in high school as a first baseman. He said, until I got Lee Walls, nobody told me I was supposed to throw overhand from the outfield. <laughs> now it is better than average. Very unique stance. Watch that front foot. Looks like it's left over from a dance class. He'll get up on his toe.
Peel goes down to the first base umpire, Russ Getz. And he didn't go. There's Lee. There's Lee Walls, Captain Midnight, a teammate of mine over at Pittsburgh. Two balls and a strike. On the third baseline, but foul. Henderson led the American League in hits. 135. And runs with 89. And stolen bases, 56. Henderson hasn't had a chance or attempted it yet, but there are the stats, 1981. First in three categories. Stolen base, runs, hits, as Joe told you. Look at an on-base percentage. 411. Seven triples. Good. That'll give you an idea what kind of speed he has. But over the last three years, Ricky Henderson has butted successfully off Tommy John five times. He hasn't tried it yet today. Five for five against John. Well hit down the left field line. Henderson digging hard. He's going to try for two. He'll make it easily. So Henderson with two outs is on at second base. Nettles does a lot of moving around at third base. He gets a signal from his shortstop and an off-speed pitch. He will move closer to the line. This is just out of his reach. We look at the line drive. Nettles doesn't get it. Nobody will. Voted the all-time Yankee third baseman in the poll by the fans. Uh, maybe a foot out of his reach. Tremendously quick hands Nettles has. Murphy bounced out his first time up. Takes it low, ball one. Murphy with men in scoring position was a good hitter. He had a 343. There you see it. Two balls and no strikes. Hendr uh, Murphy has changed since the uh, playoff for the Western Division. He's had trouble late in the season. He's been in somewhat of a slump, but he's brought his hands down about shoulder level. He had that bat right around his left ear just a few days ago. He was trying to make adjustments. Look at that. Hit the strike. Two balls and one strike to count. Clyde King with his hat off, looking over the hitters coming up. Lemon and Charlie Lau hitting authority. Fouled on the first baseline. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Base runner Henderson heads back to second base. We're in the third inning, three nothing. The Yankees are leading. They score three in the bottom of the first. Mumphrey struck out. Milburn singled. Winfield walked. Jackson into a force play. Gamble walked, and then Nettles unloaded with a double three-run score. Billy Martin, who's managed Minnesota, Detroit, Texas, Yankees twice, Oakland A's. He's done one thing very well every place he's been. Spelled W-I-N. That he has done. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Three and two. The on-deck batter is Big Cliff Johnson. He bats from the right side, so Tommy John would like to get Murphy. And there you see him, Cliff Johnson. He walked him, puts him on. Murphy was second in the American League with walks. He had 73. So that brings up Johnson, who is the tying run. The designated hitter. Johnson with 17 home Cliff runs in the Johnson. course of the year. Yeah, he's had a couple of base runners on in the second, and he didn't have base runners on here in the third. You can hear Rick Sharon's voice yelling to his infielder as he showed the two out sign saying to his infielders, knock it down. Don't let a ground ball get through so Ruff can score. It's low, ball one. I mean, John, a bit disgusted, as you saw with that shot. He wants to throw the ground ball. Nettles 
to third. He bobbles it. Everybody's safe. He tried to catch the ball and step on third because it was going to be a tough play at first. And everybody is safe. The bases are loaded. Well, you see a little bit of, uh, not exactly Billy Ball, but the kind of speed that Ricky Henderson had. Nettles probably looking out of the corner of his eye at Henderson. Ball hits him on the heel. Joe, he might have had a better shot at Cliff Johnson at first base than at third because Johnson, with that hard swing, that corkscrew swing, he really didn't get a good jump. So from another angle, Henderson coming hard. Nettles waited on the ball. The speed. So it's an error on Greg Nettles, and that loads the bases and brings up Armas. And he's a big RBI man. He drove in 76 during the season. It is low, ball one. Armas single to right his first time up. Man, the Yankees want to pitch around. Can't right now, can they? He can look so bad, Armas, on a pitch, and then hit one of your mistakes a long way. Shortstop Milburn has it. Torando forces on. Yankees get out of it. So with the bases loaded, Tommy John gets a ground ball from Armas. That ends the third inning. We move to the bottom half of the third inning. Besides, when you fly in and out of this great city, Statue of Liberty, there's a helicopter flying over. And one of the great sights as you fly out is Yankee Stadium from overhead. And there you have a view of it. Larry Milburn, single and scored his first time up. Straight away center field. But Murphy is there. He didn't swing that hard, but as we mentioned, they play a very shallow outfield. So there's one away. Dave Winfield is the batter. And this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. In any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Dave Winfield. Oh, he has changed his batting style under Charlie Lau. Moved way off the plate, deep in the box. Get those arms extended. He pops this one up. Moore near the stands and doesn't have a play at strike one. You know, Tony, we talk about the mechanics of Charlie Lau, but I think one other thing is very important that he gives the hitters. It's his philosophy, and that is to accept failure. I mean, to believe that if you get three out of 10, you are a 300 hitter, but you fail twice as many times. So you're not going to get a hit every time. How many times you've seen guys get so upset that they will not accept failure and it costs them? High. One ball, one strike. Mike Norris. They trail three to nothing. Yankees in front. Well, Brian Gumbel talked about it in his pregame show. We've alluded to it. Reggie Jackson's on deck, and it seems almost like a soap opera, as you called it. Reggie, Billy, George show. We have to talk a little further about that. Some comments from Reggie about it. I tell you, wherever Reggie Jackson goes, there's excitement. Curveball misses. Two balls and two strikes. There you see Billy in the middle, Art Fowler. So Art's left is tomorrow's scheduled starting pitcher. You just saw his face and mustache, Steve McCaddy, who's going to get a lot of votes for Cy Young Award this year. Pull foul, look out, that bounced around. Got a photographer on a rebound. I'm certain that Art is sitting next to McCaddy. It's a, it's a procedure he uses uh, when a pitcher is to pitch the next day, so they can go over hitters together. It's a young staff, Dave Winfield, 1981. Bats, hits, total bases, doubles, RBI, game-winning RBIs. Mm. A lot of ones there. First for, for the Yankees. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Oh, foul once again. He tried to pull the screwball, and that's going to be tough.
Three to nothing, the Yankees lead. Winfield drafted by four, if you haven't heard, different professional leagues at the University of Minnesota, the American Basketball Association, the NBA, the NFL. He decided to choose baseball. He went directly to I, San Diego right from the University of Minnesota. Played for the Lake Dick Siebert University of Minnesota as did Paul Molitor of Milwaukee. Well, foul once again. You think he feels about this time when he made the right choice? <laughs> <laughs> he secured his financial future for as long as he and his family are around. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Nobody on. Oakland A's and the Yankees battling for the American League pennant. Broken bat, tried to go the opposite way. McKay has it, and Winfield is out. Reggie Jackson coming up. Well, we talked about the George, the Billy, the Reggie show. We asked him what his opinions and all that marquee value is. Well, Tony, I guess the media and uh, uh, television and radio people, most of them really lose sight of uh, what is important. And uh, I think if they have to write stories like that, to me, it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, if it's a Reggie George Billy show in fun, fine, but I want no part of any uh, animosity, no part of anything uh, embarrassing to anyone. If I'm concerned about Billy Martin or that kind of a show, then I'm not going to play very well on the field. I'm concerned about the open A's, and that's it. Reggie Jackson. He has played in more league championship series than any player. It's his ninth. Deep to left center field. Henderson, Murphy, and Murphy is there. And outfield can go get him. One, two, three for the Yankees. We complete three innings of baseball here. It's a Yankees three and Oakland nothing. If you were more of America from Houston, Texas, the pilot. Captain Tim Townley Wren from Escanaba, Michigan. Our cameraman is Al Camoyne. Beautiful shot of Yankee Stadium. We move to the fourth inning. The Yankees, three runs, two hits, and one error. Oakland A's, no runs, three hits, no errors. And this afternoon, Tommy Lasorda and his Dodgers, five. Montreal one. Ball one on Mickey Klutz. Klutz was safe in the first inning. The base hit off the glove of Tommy John. Hits this one to straightaway center field. And Mumphrey says, I'll wait for it. There's one out. We've talked an awful lot about the Oakland A's outfield. You don't get them any better than Dave Winfield in left. As good a throwing arm as there is. Mumphrey has exceptional speed, even though he's coming off a foot injury. And Jackson, late in the season against Milwaukee, made some outstanding plays. He has speed, and he has a good throwing arm. Here's Kelvin Moore, strike one. Moore, born in Leroy, Alabama, where he now lives. Went to Jackson State. He was the A's number three pick in the June 1978 free agent draft. Ken Parker, the scout, drafted him. He hit in his last five games, seven for 19. Down the third baseman, Greg Nettles. Over to first, it is in time. Nice play. The amazing anticipation of Greg Nettles. When Tommy John wound up before he released the ball, Nettles moved about four steps over to the line. It was an off-speed pitch. Or when Tommy John comes inside to try and get the ball down and into hitters, he'll move toward the line. He moved about five steps, and the ball was off the bat. He's getting signals from Milburn, his shortstop, because he can't see into Cerrone signs. This is Jeff Newman hitting to a double play his first time up. It's outside, ball one. Two men out, nobody on. Doesn't get it. One ball and one strike. Hayes went down in order in the first inning, but they had a couple of base runners in the second. They had bases loaded in the third.
Line drive right at Milburn. So it's a perfect inning. We go to the bottom half, the fourth inning. It's the Yankees, three, Oakland, nothing. And it'll be Oscar Gant, three to nothing lead in the bottom of the fourth. I wonder which plan he's mulling over right now, plan A or play plan B. Doesn't he have two and publicized anyway? Plan A, if they win the whole thing, will keep a lot of members of the team, and apparently a plan B, if they don't get in the World Series and win all of that, he may back up the truck and haul off a lot of pinstripes. Whatever he has done or going to do, he's been in the playoffs. And he's here once again with his team. And this is Oscar Gamble, who walked and scored. Screwball is a strike. Oscar Gamble, he has been around. One ball, one strike. Oscar has played for the Cubs, the Phillies, Indians, White Sox, Padres, Rangers, and the Yankees twice. Two balls and a strike. Outside, three and one. Mike Norris. Well hit, but pulled foul. He got way out in front. Three and two to count. I cannot think of a pitcher in baseball, no matter how hard he throws, who can prevent Oscar Gamble from pulling the ball. He is so quick and has a very lively bat. He does not give you much of a target to throw out. Look at this shot. His head and hands right in the strike zone. He what got him on what strikes. So Gamble called out on strikes. Doesn't believe it. It's the second strikeout for Mike Norris. Gamble on the screwball for Norris. Watch the arm action of Norris. The ball tails away. Nice job by Jeff Moon to sneak in the ball in a little bit. He very gracefully pulled that ball back, didn't he? So there's one out. Here's Nettles. And so far as the big hero, he had a double in the first inning with the bases loaded. Strike one fouls it back. Billy will go a long time with his starting pitching. Obviously with the DH. You don't have to take him out when you're behind. But uh, he has never had a whole lot of faith in that bullpen. Try to develop some youngsters. He's got Underwood down there, a kid named Beard, who's a very hard thrower. Billy and Art Fowler. The kid Beard could become important. He's young and he throws hard. He may be called out in this series. One ball and two strikes. They'll clock pitches just in a number. That's why they complete games or innings pitches. I mean, you don't mean that much. It's how many pitches you make. Different pitchers have different ranges. Norris, it's about 115 what he averages during the ball game. Low. Two balls and two strikes. Bottom of the fourth, three nothing. Yankees lead. He's doctoring. Where does he get it? Spitballs are passe. Become more sophisticated. Bad left center field. And once again, it's Murphy. It looks like there's a big gap when it starts out, but those outfielders really plug the gap in a hurry. As this series goes along and we move to Oakland, for this speedy outfield, you've got two ideal parks because they're both spacious ballparks. These kids have a a long way to go in the alleys here in Yankee Stadium and right and left center field. One Bob strike to count on Bob Watson. Bob Watson average that you saw was a not the typical average. He, uh, he is really struggling. He had a severely pulled groin muscle most of the season. Couldn't shake it. Bay said he hung the pitch and Watson just jumped on it. Watson hit the ball hard his first time up. Fly deep to left center field. So 
Watson is on, and Rick Cerrone is the batter. Rick Cerrone. Two outs. Base runner at first, Watson. Cerrone bounced out his first time up, third to first. Down the left field line, coming over fast. What a play. To grab Henderson, and what a play he made. That outfield can take more base hits away. Henderson near the line. What a play he made. Here it is. Well, throw you back a few years, a man named Sandy Ambrose who couldn't run like this kid nor play the outfield. And where he was playing, Cerrone was shading him to left center field a little bit, trying to protect the gap in left center. He just outran the ball. The ball was sinking and hooking away from him. And you wonder if he could have made that play if he were a right-hand thrower and the glove wasn't on that hand. So, game of inches, he proved it right there. Great play. End of four. Yankees three, Oakland nothing. We're back in the Bronx, New York, Yankee Stadium. We go to the top of the fifth. Game number one for the American League pennant, the Oakland A's versus the New York Yankees. This is Yankees three, Oakland none, nothing. Tommy John versus Mike Norris. A full house. Through four, Tommy John has struck out two, walked one. He has had six ground ball outs. It'll be Dave McKay, Rob Piccolo, Second Ricky pitch. Henderson, the leadoff hitter. Dave McKay. McKay lined the right field in the third. Tommy John finished fourth in the American League for the season in ERA and McCaddy. Stewart, then a slam. One ball. Yankees scored their three runs in the first inning. After a monthly strikeout leading it off, a single, a walk by Winfield, Jackson. Two hopper, Larry Milburn. Watson one out. With that Yankee three run first, Winfield with a hard slide and a possible double play ball by Jackson. Kept the inning going. Gamble walk. Nettles a two out double. Rob scored all three. There are your ERA leaders in the American League. A caddy will go tomorrow for Oakland. Rudy May, who's not pitched effectively for the Yankees, will be thrown into the number two starting spot in ball game two. Chopped foul by Piccolo. One out, three to nothing, Yankees lead. Billy Martin. A protege of Casey Stengel. That is Whitey Herzog, Daryl Johnson when he managed the Red Sox. Almost every one of the offices of these men that you go to play for Casey, they have a Casey Stengel picture behind their desk. One strike. One and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Nettles moved to his right. The Peach Low gets it by for a single to left field. So Pizzolo is on, getting some instructions from Jackie Moore. Henderson has gotten on base an awful lot. We talked to him about getting on base. You know, I feel that, you know, that's a good compliment of people that saying keep your hands off the base. But, you know, I believe that Kansas City kept me off the base for two games in a row, and we won the ball game. So I don't believe in that all the time. If you keep me off the base, you still got to worry about eight more batters than my lineup for us to keep me off the base. And the A's prove that they're more than a one-dimensional ball club. Not just Billy Ball with their league leading 104 home runs. One out. Ball one. Henderson grounded out to second base and doubled to left field. Hitting with Peach Lund first. Henderson is one hitter who does not fear hitting with two strikes. He has a little power. 2 0 from Tommy John.
John will not give in to a hitter. He never says, here it is, hit it right down the middle. He might start a ball down the middle of the plate that drifts right on the outside corner. Ground ball. Milford, bad hop, off his glove. Pichillo will try for third and make it. Henderson will go to second base, and he makes it. A tough hop for Larry Milburn, who's played so well, replacing Bucky Dent. The big play is the ability of uh, Henderson to get to second base. Here's that play once again. You see it go off the glove. Pichillo didn't hesitate, but Henderson, with good speed, gets down to second, and that takes away that double play situation. And obviously a base hit, and it's a 3-2 ball game. So now Oakland has runners on second and third with one out. They are trailing by three as Billy Martin, as his number two hitter up, Dwayne Murphy. Ground ball to score a run. Randolph, Watson out number two. Henderson rounds third base back. Make sure that Watson was keeping an eye on him, so it's now three to one. George Steinbrenner, who Jordan stormed into the clubhouse after game Jordan number four Johnson. against the Brewers. He rated Cerrone, Winfield. Said he was paying them too much money to have them make the kind of mistakes they did. So there are two outs. And it's Cliff Johnson who has struck out and got on by an error. Tony, that was ruled a double all the way, a two-base hit. That is a very generous scoring. Red Foley of the Daily News and Gene Swartz of the San Francisco Examiner. The co scores in this ball game. One ball, no strikes to Johnson with two down. Milburn had to go a couple of steps to his right. The ball might have taken a funny hop. The play Johnson to pull in the infield. Milburn chaining him toward the hole. One ball, one strike. Yankee bullpen, little activity. And there is Ron Davis, Ian the Goose, and the big men of that bullpen. He's up, I would say, fairly early. With uh, Henderson at third, Tommy John is pitching from the stretch. Seven times this season, as we look at Henderson, that the A's tried to steal home, they were unsuccessful. They were 0 for 7. Chopped foul by. Johnson, they work credibly with him stealing home. Runners in first and third, and a pitcher threw over to first base, and the unlikely man, Jeff Newman, came on and stole home. There's the stat. Henderson with terrific speed down at third base and two outs, and a one ball, two strike count on Johnson. Extra base power and Cliff Johnson at the plate, making Tommy John wait. Nettles getting Johnson the line. Hit by John, but positioned perfectly as Willie Randolph fires to Watson. They strand Henderson, but they do keep He was 22 and 9. But the fact is strange that three writers who cast ballots never had Norris's name on the ballot. That is very difficult. That is strange. Can't understand that. Oakland baseman. with one run, five hits, no errors. The Yankees Willie three runs, three hits, one error. The Willie Randolph. Who fly to right center field. A good catch by Murphy. Randolph in a season-long slump. One ball, no strikes. Two and all. Oh. Randolph, who after the strike, got in uh, Mr. Steinbrenner's doghouse just a little bit when he had a scheduled charitable event. He went to, did not show up for a, a mandatory workout. Was fined. Two balls, one strike. Joe Altabelli, former San Francisco Giants manager, coaching down at third base. There is a lot of baseball experience behind Bob Lemon on that bench, isn't there? 3-1. Oh. Jeff Carborn, who serves now as co fan coach. Managed Cleveland, Yoki, of course, the Yankees and the Mets. Mike King. Mike 
game. Three balls, one strike. To Willie Randolph. Three and two. Randolph says that almost all year long, he said it's been a strange year. I have hit the ball hard. I've experienced months of hitting the ball hard, not getting it. He got him. Mike Norris changes speeds as Randolph way out in front, one out. Here's a swing. You can see that Randolph. The center fielder. Well, he's way out. Jerry Humphrey. Completely Strikeout number three for Mike Norris. He walked two, both of those in the first inning. Now it's Jerry Humphrey as Clyde, uh, as Klutz moves into third base looking for a bunt. I'm going to say Clyde Klutz, late Clyde, it's Mickey Klutz. Fouled out of play. One strike. Look out, Mike. Gold Glove winner, he pulses on the ball, he will not get him. Boy, that ball went right back at the face of Mike Norris. He was a 1980 Gold Glove winner for fielding. You'll see the play. Watch the reaction. Now, once he goes down, he doesn't stay down. The good athlete that he is, he literally ends up on the other side of first base. Now, he'll pick up the ball, and here's another look at it. Watch the reaction, and he just keeps going once the ball gets by the first baseman more. It was, uh, there you see uh, more, uh, Norris in your picture as Moore couldn't come up with the ball. And now Pichelo's just in talking to him to kind of settle him down with one out here. Billy Martin looking on. And Mumphrey is totally base threat, uh, base dealing threat right here. Milbourne has pretty good bat control. One out, Klutz has come way up at third base once again. The infielders telling Mike Norris who's going to take the throw and the ball hit back to him. Pitch out. Billy Martin called the pitch out from the bench. They thought that Bob Lemon might have had a steal or a hit and run going. Mumphrey stole 13 bases in 1981. Well, he was caught nine times. Inju injured a good part of the year with a foot injury. 1 0. Oh, he's going. Swing. Here comes the throw from Newman. He is out. Now, an argument. Joe Altabelli will come out. Mumphrey thought he had the corner of the bag as he tried to slide away from the throw. After the pitch out, they start him. He's got a pretty good jump. You see him looking at the batter, try to find that ball. Now, let's see. What do you think? It looked like he tagged him from that angle, but we'll give you another one. That may give you a better view. Tagged him after his hand if he did. His hand was on the bag. He slides away from the ball. That is Jerry Newdecker to the second base of our. He never missed him. He, he never fact, tagged him. Pichillo goes back for the second tag, and that was the proof. He, he never tagged him when his hand him. was on the bag. It was an awfully difficult call. That's the one that shows it right here. Now watch. He misses his hand. Watch him go back. Now he'll go back and try to Whoop. get him again. All right. On a two-ball, one-strike count with two outs. Milborn lines a single to right. A good camera work, guys. I think Mumphrey had a legitimate beef look, there look. because Pichillo yeah, missed the tag good. and went back the second time to get him. It's a good slide. Newman is now throwing out four in a row going back to the Kansas City series. Watch Pichillo's hand now. It's behind Mumphrey. Now, he'll go back and try to make it. There he goes. He's going to make the tag now. Right there. He knew he missed him. And uh, he was a little bit surprised. Well, apparently, Drew Decker, well, Jerry Newdecker, you can see by that, is saying he tagged you on the arm as you went by the first time. There are two outs. Yankees three, Oakland one. Dave Winfield, who has walked. Head into a fielder's choice. Milburn does not have a whole lot of speed. He's getting a decent lead. He's stolen just two bases on the season. Ball one to Winfield. Norris now is keeping the ball down very well. Some trouble early where he was throwing some slow curves and hanging them. 
The screwball was up, but he's been pretty much down around the knees lately. One and all with two outs. Murphy and a broken bat will get it for out number three. So the Yankees strand a runner. Number three on the ball game after five here at Yankee Stadium for the American League pennant. It is the Yankees three, the Oakland A's one. It'll be Armas, Mickey Klutz, Calvin Moore due up for the A's. Tommy John, who's won several awards, for the Comeback Player of the Year award. An award I think cherished to a lot of people in baseball and the player who gets it. From late Fred Hutchinson, a dear friend of yours, Joe. The right fielder. It'll be Armas. Plutz and Moore. Armas single to right field, grounded out to short. Some people this feel this man will will be MVP in the American League. Fouled out of play by Armas. A couple of his contenders will be Bobby Gritch from the Angels. A good year unnoticed. Ricky Henderson, I would think. Dwight Evans up in Boston. And you might even see some votes for Raleigh Fingers of the Brewers. Who helped turn that club around out of the bullpen. One strike to Armas. Good sinker from Tommy John. He goes 0-2. Rick Cerrone got hit with that pitch as we look at the stats on Armas. 22 home runs. He was tied. Eddie Murray, of course, is going to get some MVP votes. As he and Armas went down to the wire in that RBI chase. Two strikes. One and two. Here's where Tommy John sets hitters up so well. He was away, away. That last pitch was a foot outside, and he has that... Whitey Ford did it so well. He'll sneak that fastball in on your fist. Little extra on it. Stays away. Look out. He gets Armas. Goes after a bad pitch. One out. You had better be disciplined against Tommy John. He just can't hold that bat. And out it goes. Here's another look at the Again, same close. pitch now. It's way out of the strike zone, and Armas just thought he could get it and couldn't even hold on to his bat. Strike count number three, Tommy John. Now it's Klutz. One ball, no strikes. Each team has five hits. The Yankees lead three to one. We're in the sixth. Two and oh. You know, that reminded me, Tony, I don't know if it's just me, but you don't see many of the pine tar rags anymore like it used to be. Guys that have pine tar all over the bat. Still down in the rag, but... Base hit the, up the middle for Klutz. His second hit of the ball game. Well, we have a chance. We're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC the Television baseman. Network. This is Channel 4, KNBC, Los Angeles. Top of the six, Joe Gargiola, Tony Kubek. Yankees lead three to one. They scored all three of their ones back in the first inning. A couple of walks. A key bases loaded, two out base hit, driving home all three runs by Greg Nettles. The hitter now with a man on first and one out is Calvin Moore. They scored their run in the fifth. Ground up by McKay. Pichillo a single. Ball at the Milburn that he couldn't handle was scored a double. Peach low scored on a ground out to the infield. A strike from Tommy John. Moore, the youngster, was 0 for 8. It's Kansas City, the Western Division title. One and one. Ron Davis once again. Up awfully early, but he's been a pretty good middle relief man. Some say the best middle relief man in baseball. Milburn, a lot of time getting rid of the ball, but they still turn the double play. He does a lot of things that I don't necessarily agree with, and his ways are uh, definitely unique. 
Uh, I'm very fortunate, I think, Tony, the fact that I've, 35 years of age, I've been in the game 15 years, and a lot of the things that George does don't bother me or don't create a certain kind of a reaction, or at least a negative one. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things that George does that I don't like, but the man owns the ball club. He has the right pretty much to do what he, he feels like doing. Uh, as I said, I thought his timing was wrong at the time, but I think on the other side, I appreciate the fact that I've been able to play on great Yankee ball clubs, and he's put the players on the field. So for all the negatives you can say about him, there's just as many positives. Back swing by Jackson. Count goes one ball and one strike. Well, Reggie was the man after the the uprising after game number four against Milwaukee where Mr. Steinbrenner came in. The next day, he went directly up to Mr. Steinbrenner, said that Cerrone should not have been berated that way. One ball, two strikes, and they continue to pump the ball inside to Jackson. Reggie Jackson hand-carried a note from Mr. Steinbrenner to Rick Cerrone, the context of which was things are said in the motion that we don't mean. But I still think you did not make a good base running move, Rick. So Reggie helped iron it out. He was a peacemaker. One ball, two strikes with nobody out. Norris and his Oakland A's trailing by two. Check sway. Great play by Norris as he backhands it. One out. What a play he made. He made a good play on the last one. Didn't get the man, but this one. Gold Glove winner. You'll get another it. look at it. Watch his reaction. Superb athlete. Backhands the ball. Down he goes. In control. One out. We're the bottom of the six. Three to one. The Yankees lead over the A's. Best of five for the American League pennant. The A's beat the Kansas City Royals three straight to get here. The Yankees had a fight off the Milwaukee Brewers in five ball games. Oscar Gamble takes it inside, one ball. Mr. October, he's been dubbed. He's 0 for 3 in the ball game thus far, although he did beat out an important ground ball to prevent a double play, fouled off. Jackson stole a base in this game. One and one. Greg Nettles on deck. The big two out. Three RBI double the left center field. You see a guy like this up on the plate and you're catching. What's your first inclination? Which way do you win? Which way do you want to pitch? Me, I would go inside. All right. Now, with Norris, though, with that screwball, I would just make sure he way inside with the fastball and make him hit the screwball. So when Gamble was called out in the fourth, it was a screwball that was low and away. Jeff Newman, who alternates behind home plate with Mike Heath, two and one to Gamble. Screwball hit the left field, but it'll go foul. Billy Martin, since spring training, has alternated his shortstop, which is very unusual. Every other day, he plays either Piccolo or Stanley. He's created kind of a competition. Billy there behind Art Fowler. Follow the man who every one of these A's credits with teaching him how to win, how to pitch. Norris has thrown a lot of pitches in this ballgame, most of them back in inning number one, where the Yankees had a lot of pressure on him. Had trouble with his control when he walked two. Two and two with one out. What a screwball. Perfect pitch again. He gets Gamble. The second time, this time swinging. The third baseman, Greg Nettles. Right now, number four. Nettles with a double. Three RBIs in the first. He fly to center field in the fourth. What shows he's put on in postseason play? <laughs> Clinics. Two outs. Norris pulls the string. Norris coming over to help out Newman in case he needs it. For the Yankee dugout, he doesn't get it. Calvin Moore and Norris were both over to help. Newman had that ball all the way until he heard Moore coming over there. 
And he's got it right now. He knows he can make that play. He wants to see how close he is to the stand. He still got it. Now he'll back off. As soon as he heard uh, Moore coming over. See him find the stands? He's still got it right here. He knows he's going to make the play. And now he'll back off. There's no breeze whatsoever in this ballpark, so relatively no win factor, if any. One strike, two outs. Greg Dennis. Had to bust him in tight. Hasn't thrown a whole lot of fastballs. Norris doesn't like to throw his fastball for strikes. He'll show it to you and go to the screwball most of the time with a slow curve and occasional slider. Newman wants the ball away. Another fastball. One ball, two strikes. Almost have to believe Tony Nettles was looking for that screwsy that time. Well, he's been serving the ball out to left field or toward left center. We're busting him inside. There's the screwball. A little harder screwball fouled off. Greg Nettles' swing made for this ballpark. He can take a pitch low and away and sometimes off the plate outside and still jerk it in that short porch. That's what made Yogi so tough in this park. He could pull that ball down the line. 310 down the line is Joe Seven. 353 as you go to right center field. Fouled off. Should be out of play. It is. Of the 15 home runs that Nettles hit this year, 11 were hit in Yankee Stadium. Obviously, as you look at the pitcher's ballpark, Yankees in their long history have only had six batting champions. They haven't had one since 1956. And Rod Carew has more than the Yankees as far as batting titles. It's amazing. All the good hitters have been here. I know it's a pitcher's park, but that almost borders on the ridiculous. I think one of the reasons, Joe, is when they stacked their, uh, they looked for left-hand hitters, obviously, with power. They did even more so when it was 296 down the line. So they want guys to pull the ball. And as soon as you start pulling the ball, your average is bound to go down. It's a straightaway hitters who lead the league. Chopper, Moore will flip to Norris. Good play on both ends. So the Yankees are retired to sixth. One, two, three by Mike Norris. We'll go to the seventh. We'll score Yankees three. Oakland won. It'll be Newman McCann Piccolo. And we'll be right back after these messages. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek here at Yankee Stadium. These Yankee fans whooping it up here as they leave the Oakland A's three to one. We have a new pitcher on the mound. Charlie Metro, the scout there, that big cowboy had, because he was silhouette. Ron Davis is the New pitcher, Davis, four and five on the year, and run average of 2.71, was in 43 games, pitched 73 innings, struck out 83, walked 25. Davis has been kind of lobbying for a new statistic in baseball, and, and I'm kind of on his side. That's the middle relief pitcher who comes in and holds the other ball club for the star, in this particular case, Goose Gossage, to come out and nail it down. Many times that happens, you hold the other ball club, especially in the losing game. The team will tie, go ahead, and the relief pitcher who comes in to nail it down gets the credit. Davis, I think he's got a, a good point, Tony. He certainly does. He does not get the recognition he probably should. He's still making good money. He may be the, well, he's a, he's a very high paid relief pitcher. He's the man who, Stan Williams, when he was the pitching coach, changed from a sinker ball pitcher. That's Keith Drumright, who is going to pinch hit a left-handed hitter. Was injured after he'd had a good start for this ball club. Newman, number 14, Drumright. Drumright, a 291 average in 31 ball games. He is a singles hitter. He didn't have a home run. He had one triple, one double, 25 base hits. Hits the ball to left field on occasion. There's his strike. Three runs, five hits, and one error for the Yankees. One run, six hits, and no errors for Oakland. We're in the seventh inning. Ron Davis in relief of Tommy Johns. One ball and one strike is the count. When Stan Williams made Davis, I think, a more effective pitcher, he said, stop throwing that two-seam fastball, go to four seams. You throw hard enough that you can blow the ball by, guys. So uh, he came up with the sinking fastball. And then he started throwing that riser, and he put together some strings of strikeouts, which were just unbelievable during the season. He'll get up to 94, 95. Passage, of course, approaches 100 at times. Towards the left field line, 
Winfield coming in near the line makes the catch. So there's one away in the seventh inning. And it brings up McKay. Joe, in most ballparks, they put the best outfielder in center field. But this outfield in left field, field, especially in day baseball where the sun shines in your eyes, could be this tough of outfielders in baseball. So they put Winfield, their best outfielder, in left field. It's Winfield, Mumphrey, and Jackson in the outfield for the Yankees. McKay has hit the ball hard. He'll now go to the other side, bat left-handed against Davis. Nettles, a couple steps in at third. Strike one. McKay hit 291, batting left-handed, 234 for the right side. Left-handed, he hits the ball to left field on occasion, although lately has pulled the ball a little bit, but basically toward left field. Right-handed, he's pretty much of a pull hitter. The one-strike pitch by Davis. Two strikes. This crowd, after the three-run first inning, kind of just sat back. Now they're starting to react as we come into the seventh inning. Oakland trailing by two. Foul ball out of play. The Dodgers beat Montreal 5-1. to one. Putin was the winner and Gullickson was the loser. And we'll be back out here tomorrow afternoon. I like uh, Houston going to the Dodgers Stadium. That is a snake pit for visiting teams. Houston lost 14-16. to 16. So there are two away. First strikeout for Ron Davis. That's a fourth open A to go down. Pichelo with two outs and nobody on. Pichelo struck out in the third. He single Rob and scored Pichelo. the only run. That came in the fifth. He single after one man out. A double by Henderson off the glove of the shortstop. But Pichelo at third base and he scored on the ground ball by Murphy and it's ball one Yankee scored their three runs after one out Milburn single Dave Winfield walked Reggie Jackson into a force play Gamble walked and Nettles doubled foul ball out of play and Gamble scored all the way from first three RBIs for Nettles and that's how we stand three to one Yankees over Oakland two outs in the seventh and if there's an obvious difference in the two pitching staffs you're seeing it now the experience of the Davis if he gets in trouble, you can go to a gossip. That bullpen is, is a big difference, I think. Could tell the difference in this series. One ball and two strikes with two outs. All the way back, and it's two balls and two strikes. Four members of the Yankee scouting team who followed this Oakland A's team for about a month. Man to your left lower corner is Gary Hughes. The fellow with the glasses scratching his face is Bob Neiman. Jerry Walker, a former pitcher and part-time pitching coach, is up in the left. And the kid who throws batting practice, Doug Malvin, who has kept those charts for three years. They know every tendency. They know what time they get up and what time they eat breakfast. You can overscout, of course, but boy, they, they've got everything down to a science. Cody Brenner has done that. I will say that. Now he's kept the scouting system going, and it helps sometimes, but Custer knew what they ate, what time they got up. There's just too many of them. <laughs> Mike Heath is behind the plate. I tell you, this ballpark is buzzing. I have to tell you, our good friends from real people were all over the ballpark. John Barber, Skip Stevenson, and Bill Rafferty with the camera crew. They're filming a special for around Thanksgiving, and they're, we're filming everybody about, in fact, Richie Phillips, they said to him, what are umpires? He said, umpires are real people, too. So you'll see the special around Thanksgiving, but this ballpark, there's a real there people. Out. Has he taken off a few pounds? Yes, sir. Volunteer fireman down in Texas. He was a uh, very important man to a pretty good football player, Billy Sims. He took Billy under his wing them out of trouble so we're ready to go here 
And it's a fastball over the outside corner for strike one. Bob Watson fly to center and single to left. Line drive, left field. He doesn't get it. Henderson. The ball knuckled out there, and Watson is on. And let's see how they rule it. It looked like he was going to be able to make the play. And it knuckled out there, and he just didn't get it. That ball is sinking hard. Many times in this part of the ballpark, on a looping line drive like that, there's going to be a problem with the lights. He battled the lights, I believe, Joe, and battled them right down to the ground, and the ball just caroms off the heel of his glove. Going down as he did will give you an indication of a problem with the lights. And as you said, a sinking knuckleball, it appears. Another pinch runner, I believe, for Bobby Watson down at first base. That's a tribute to their bullpen right there. They're giving Salt. him an error. So Watson. An error, and Bobby Brown will be the runner, and Mike Ferraro talking to him, and I'm sure he'll be just reaffirming the signs that out the belly obviously is given to Cerrone already. Well, you would think that Bob Lemon, the Yankee manager, would try and pat his lead. Brown has speed. Set up a bunt situation. Clutch is looking for it at third. Norris is an excellent fielder, as we've seen. Three to one. Yankees out in front. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jones hit the ball hard twice. Takes it low, ball one. Norris, as you saw, breaking towards first base, expecting Cerrone to bunt towards the youngster Moore. Now, with a lot of infielders moving around, with a hitter ahead, there is the possibility of the switch being put on. Cerrone pulls the ball well. They may give him the hit. Let's see. Bunting. Good. Beautiful bunt. Norris will make the play to first, and McKay, sacrifice executed perfectly. Boy, that's a beautiful play when it's worked right. Sorrell picks his man right. He knows he can't bat on putts. He goes to the youngster Moore, who has to hold the runner on first before he raises. Show you how good a fielder Norris is. He got way over to the foul line on that. So there's one out. Here's Willie Randolph. Randolph fly to center field in the second. He struck out in the fifth. Struck out on the screwball. Klutz is still moving in close to third. Line down the left field line foul. Why would Klutz be playing that close, Tony? Well, I would guess because of Randolph's speed, he's been in pretty much of a season-long slump. Possibly the scouting reports compiled for the Oakland A's and the Yankees by Dale Wilbert tells him that to get out of the slump, Randolph has been dropping the bunt down a little bit. So they're looking at tendencies of what guys might do over the long haul. One strike to count. Now he's backing up at third. Look at Inside. One ball and one strike with one out. Dodgers beat Montreal this afternoon 5-1. to one. Gullickson the loser. Hooten was the winner. And here is 3-1 Yankees over the A's. Bottom of the seventh. Brown is the runner at second. Inside. Two balls and one strike with one out. Outfield is shallow. As we look at Bobby Brown, base hit right at him with the arms they have as you look at the defense, and we'll have some excitement at the plate. Shallow in this ballpark is dangerous because there's so much more room behind you. You've got to have great faith in your ability to turn and go back in the ball, which Murphy does, and so does Henderson. Right to the shortstop, they're going to third. They got him. It was close. But Bobby Brown is out. Picholo to Klutz. Bad base running by Bobby Brown. He got carried away. Ball it to the left side. Give a little credit, of course, to Picholo. Who throws over the top of the runner. I'll tell you, that tag was there. But from that angle, it appeared that he slid under the tag. Very close play for third base umpire Marty Springstad. Here's another angle for you. 
Putts had to go up and then come down. Altabelli is signaling safe, as you can tell, but he didn't really argue a lot. Not very good base running, though, Joe. That ball's hit to that side. You got to make sure you're going to make it. You can't make it close. And there's nothing the coach can do unless he's got a rope or a gun. Because you're on your way in, he's as surprised as anybody. So there are two outs. Base runner is on at first. Willie Randolph. He's a threat. 3-1. Yankees lead the Oakland A's in the seventh. Pitch out. They thought he was going. Heath has thrown out 20 of 58. Attempting to steal this season. But some scouts say he had the best season of any catcher throwing. He's got a good arm. If he gets a chance to air it out, he'll show you something. It's a strike. Catching base stealers and attempts and all that, the statistics you keep, but unless you know what the pitcher does as far as holding them on, useless. Fireworks have just gone off in right field. In the stands. And that is dangerous. Dangerous enough in an open field. As you do that, you like to have him caught and find and thrown in jail for a couple days. Billy Martin's coming out. They're throwing things from all over. You see they're collecting them between third and home. Somebody got hit in the back out there. Is that Armas who's holding his left side he's standing in short right field and something hit him in the back the trainer Joe Romo is coming out now there you see Armas that is a valuable piece of property a couple of kooks out of 50,000 people saw Kaiser got hit in the face with something so a man jump out and tackle an umpire with a blackjack in his pocket over the last few days. It's getting more brazen. They're certainly shooting fireworks off in the stands. The IQ's got to be about two when you do that. The kind of people that if they, you couldn't put them away, but if they were in, they certainly couldn't get out. And throwing things, Armas was hit. We remember earlier Dave Parker, Tony mentioned about the blackjack incident. Billy has a baseball like somebody threw a base. It is. Very disruptive, no question about it. He wants to talk to the crew chief, third base umpire, Marty Springstead, who he has just beckoned over from third base to have a conversation with. Marty Springstead, the crew chief, and Billy making the point. It's just a shame that that kind of thing goes on at the ballpark. You got a packed house. As in every case, the umpires get put in the middle. They're being asked, obviously, by Billy to do something, but what can you do? You cannot zero in on the man. Mr. Steinbrenner walked to the top of the box, I'm sure, in disgust. Well, when you got volatile people in the game at times, it carries over. So the situation here, we are in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's one ball and one strike, two outs. Yankees leading three to one, bottom of the seventh. Randolph is the base runner at first. Mumphrey is the batter. Boy, the boo is one thing, but to throw things out of the stands is a, another. Hello, two balls in one strike. Randolph. 
off at first. Two men out. Keeping an eye on him. Holding high. Three and one. Norris has thrown a lot of pitches in this ball game. Without his best stuff, he's seemed to keep himself in the game. Steinbrenner, I'm sure, has been in touch with his security people to try and enforce the restrictions that go on in all ballparks. Pat Kelly, the gentleman he's talking to, is in charge of security. And they do a good job here at Yankee Stadium. But you've got a packed, packed ballpark here tonight. Popped up. Pichelo says, I'll take it. Pichelo makes the play. So that ends the seventh inning. At the end of seven full innings, the score here, the Yankees 3-0. The caddy will work for Oakland and Rudy May for the Yankees. Game two, first is at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Then the Expos and the Dodgers in prime time going for that National League pennant. And Fernando Valenzuela is the Dodger pitcher. So that's tomorrow, a big day right here on NBC, the home of great baseball. George Steinbrenner looking on and more worried, I'm sure, strike one about the incident in the stands. We've got another incident down along the left field line. And what he's done here in his ballpark, strike two, he has beefed up the security. But it's most difficult to patrol this many when you got him in the ballpark. But he has added security. Well, Dave Reverend, the first, the first baseman. Day. Well, you know, it would be an extreme possibility, but... There are rules in the book that say if the hometown fans continue this kind of thing and disrupt the play on the field, and obviously won't happen in this postseason play, but there are forfeits that can be called by umpires. One ball and two strikes on Henderson, bounced out. As we look at Armas, who was hit by a baseball, apparently, while he was in the outfield. Foul back. Along with Mike Davis, to his right, Armas. There's tomorrow's starting pitcher up the top of your screen, Steve McCaddy, sitting next to Art Fowler. One ball and two strikes. He struck him out. Davis gets three strikeouts in a row. Sorry, the right-handed hitters, when Davis drops down and throws that crossfire, one of the most feared pitchers in baseball, obviously, is Gossels for right-handed hitters. Davis might be number two. Here is Dwayne Murphy. Ball one. Davis struck out nine in a row earlier this season, which is a major league record for relievers. He has three in a row here. Did not go around, says the umpire in third. And now Bob Lemon's going to argue that's Marty Springstead. Lemon reacted to that. Springstead. Arms folded. Did he go around? We'll have you look at it. You have to pull the trigger awfully quickly. You bet he did. It's one of those things you got to wonder, too, if the umpires in trying to look into the stands get their attention distracted by the things that are going on also. 2-1 pitch. Outside. It is 3-1. Davis doesn't waste any time. Now Murphy backs out. So I would think that Bob Lemon would like to try and save Gossage for one more day because he did have a little upper back just behind his arm, a little tightness, and he went to two breaking balls against Milwaukee. Walked in. So Murphy is on. Three to one is the score. That brings a tying run to the plate in Cliff Johnson. Johnson, as you well know, he has one thing in mind when he walks up to hit it hard and hit it far. And he'll narrow that out even more now, knowing that he's the guy who can get this team back in the ball game. He'll probably look for at least one pitch inside, as tough as that is to do off a guy like Davis who throws that hard. He'll be looking to pull off the bat if he can get around. Johnson struck out in the first, safe on an error in the third, bounced out in the fifth. Johnson has 568 career hits and 231 of those have been for extra bases, almost half his hits. So when he takes that bat out of the rack, he puts it to good use. 
He popped it straight up. He had a cut straight up back here and strike one. Watch the hips fly open. An indication that Johnson's trying to get out in front a little more and pull the ball, but he was still a little bit late on it, Joe. Still got in on him. Just Tribute to the Davis speed. Also, that sidearm motion, it's just tough as Billy Martin looks on. Three to one is the score. The Yankees are in front. We're in the eighth. Well, like anything else in a short series, Billy wants to come out with at least a split here and go back home to Oakland. But his fans there are going to go bananas on Thursday. One strike, one out. Murphy, the base runner at first. Outside. One ball and one strike. Johnson takes plenty of time. And Cerrone really took one right off the mask. And boy, you just chucked for all the parts there. That's about the time after the game you go in and get about a 154 game checkup. Let me see. I still got my ears. I still got my nose. Watch it go off that mask. Whoop. A fastball that really sailed. Here it is again. Watch it swivel ahead of Cerrone right around. Don't he is such a tough kid. He played with injuries last year, going almost 90 runs. Was out this year with a hand injury, but he's been playing lately. Johnson is just going to fool around and hope to settle his crowd down. That's one way of doing it. Now the umpire, Nick Bremigan, is going to say you're going to have to hit sometime. That's a new rule that was put in the uh, league. Uh, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, but making all those trips with a pine tar rag. Some fires deemed to be unnecessary. Try to speed up the game. One ball, two strikes. Foul ball down the left field line. Davis has not yet thrown Johnson a breaking pitch. Cerrone, you can see working on that neck. That's one of those, another one of those nicks that you get behind the plate that you can't tell anybody about. But it just doesn't feel good. He wants to get a new bat. Now I can check the bat now. Well, he's, Phil Johnson saying the bat may be checking, splitting in the grain. Wants to go back and change it. They're having a discussion about it, whether he can or whether he can't. You don't see that? My good one is not so good. So Cliff Johnson does a sale job on Nick Bremigan. He's going to be able to change. Now he's going to show it to Billy. Remember the days when you got three bats for the rest of the year? You better make the best of them. Now guys get bats a couple of dozen at a time, 17 different models, eight different weights and lengths. Cliff Johnson taking the role of the villain wrestler here. The crowd reacting to it. Billy is just sitting there watching the action, hoping that his big guy can tie it up with one swing. <laughs> He's really working the crowd. Listen. Goose Gossage, Ron Davis likes to work quick. And Johnson tried to slow his pace down. Lemon is saying right now, looks like he's punching a stop, what he's saying there. There's a rule in the book that you can put that watch on a pitcher, make him throw within a certain amount of time, although it's never enforced. Let's get that clock on the hitter, too. He's going to motion to get in there and hit, get in there and pitch, and let's go. 
Now Ron Davis is really upset. And once again, we got a little hype going. Here comes Nettles to settle his picture down. And Johnson has accomplished what he started out. You can read Davis's left. He's I've been standing out there for five minutes while he changed his back. And now you're telling me to hurry up. And now Len's going to come back down. Be restrained by Springstead. And Springstead said, if you cross the foul line and go out to the pitcher's circle, I'm going to charge you with a, a trip to the mound. You only get two in an inning to each pitcher. The gamesmanship goes on. Started by Johnson. And Billy's sitting back. I think this is part of Billy Ball that rubs off on some of his players. The interesting thing here is that they can't run out the clock. I mean, Johnson's going to have to get in there and try to hit. Meantime, the bullpen is going for Bob Lemon. The goose, Rick Gossard. One ball and two strikes with one out. Almost a wild pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Johnson really got him riled up. Murphy is still at first base. It almost is unfair, though, to have a pitcher have to stay out there that long. Ball three. Well, now, Jackie Moore at first base. He's talking to his base runner Murphy, and Cerrone wants to talk to his pitcher Davis. Johnson is a strikeout man. Cerrone with a good arm, so you would think that he'd be holding at first base. Well, especially with a man in the on deck circle, Armist. Right. You get a strikeout throw, Armist leads off the inning with nobody on base, and he can put you back in the ball game in a hurry. So we'll see what Billy does. Lead by Murphy. He's holding. Walked him. So it all worked, and the tying run is now on at first base. And the big man for the Oakland A's, Armas, is the batter. The right fielder, Jody Armas. The last pitch from Davis to Johnson, three and two that walked up. Well, may have rattled him, although I think Davis has been in enough tough situations before this time, not to let it affect him. Yep. Now Martin's coming out to talk to the umpire about stalling by the pitcher. He wants the whole plate up our front again to go out there and break up the conference. Well, at least the action is down on the field. One out. He comes loud. He's going to make a change. The goose got enough time to get loose. With all the stalling, it doesn't take Rich Gossage very long. Well, this is the kind of thing that they were talking about. The Billy is now upset more than the most animation you've seen so far. And now Bob Lemon, as George Steinbrenner continues to look on, Lemon stopped to talk to the home plate umpire. And he's going to make a pitching change. The goose will come in. The crowd will react. Time runs are on. Three to one is the score. Yankees are out in front. We're in the eighth. Tony Armas is the batter. This has really been something. Nobody has hit the ball, but we've had a lot of action or non-action. So Armas heads back to the uh, bench. Gossage comes out of the bullpen. George Steinbrenner has the conference. We've got action here. We're going to break. We'll be right back after these messages. Look at this. Cape Davis. This is the famous Mason-Dixon line. North. <laughs> South. And this Ron Davis, who has just been taken out. Davis was sailing right along in the seventh inning. One, two, three, struck out two, then he struck out the first man. And then this is the end of the inning. He's really letting Nick Bremigan have a piece of his mind, among other things. And then you saw him seated on the bench. The goose has come in. Armas is the batter. First and second. High and tight. Now, Gossage likes to work fast, and Randolph is going to come in and talk to him. 
So in the final analysis, if Cliff Johnson's job was to aggravate and agitate, he did a perfect job because Davis is gone, time runs are on, and the big man is in the batter's box. Foul straight back, one and one. But Cliff, Cliff Johnson showed him how to play billy ball without even putting the ball in play, didn't he? If it serves no other purpose, with no off days, if they should go five, it means that Gossage is forced into work in this first game. He had a little pull muscle, as we told you, a muscle spasm in his shoulder, threw a few more breaking balls, and was wild against Milwaukee. One ball, two strikes. The executive box where George Steinbrenner has been most of the night. Listen to the crowd with goos. High hopper, Randolph. In time. Johnson with a rolling block doesn't get Randolph, so they're two away. Base runners at first and third. Cliff Johnson, there was almost a mix up here. Nobody went to the back, and then the race begins for Randolph. He beats Cliff Johnson. You can see Randolph. He wasn't worried about the runner at first. Look where he's looking toward third base with Murphy's speed. Another part of Billy Ball you better watch out for. They keep on going on you. So we've got Wayne Gross coming out now. Your attention, please. Replacing Mickey Klutz. Ladies and gentlemen, batting for Klutz, number 10. Wayne you see Cliff Johnson. Gross, number 10. Wayne Gross, who had a big home run in the Kansas City game. Well, Premington's going to talk to him now. Billy has got it going now, and not a third base coach. Boyer's arguing with Springstead. No pitch. Nothing, nothing is the count. There you see Boyer at third. Strike one. When a guy works as fast as Goose and throws as hard as he does, the same with Davis. You got to be a little bit careful that you don't get caught in the middle of a swing, that you don't have your feet set in the box. Look, he's waiting to get his sign already from Cerrone, and the hitter right now is asking for time until he gets set. Foul ball, strike two. When you have the kind of fastball that Gossage has, you just don't fool around. First and third, two outs, two strikes on Gross, the pinch hitter. Crowd, goose, goose, on their feet. Out remains at strike two. Against pitchers like Gossage and Davis, there's Murphy at third. Armas at first, and held by Reverend. was on the last pitch. Willie Randolph. And the A's are retired. So we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The score here is the Yankees three, Oakland one. It'll be Milburn, Winfield, and Jackson here in the bottom of the eighth. This is radiator rust. It's building up after just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze. Now look at a radiator protected with new, improved Prestone 2 after the same miles. Quite a difference. Introducing the new silicone silicate formula Prestone to lock off rust and corrosion in all metals. Now it's even stronger for better aluminum protection. New improved Prestone 2. The best seller just got better. No wonder we're number one. Polaroid Sun Camera is a new system with a piece of the sun inside. It can turn bad light into good pictures. What's wrong with that stuff? It's never where you want it. Like now. See, you've never been so sure of an instant picture. Perfect. What's it doing good light? Then it uses just enough of its own light to touch up the small shadows. You use it on every shot. It can make any picture better. I'll buy that. They're going fast, folks. Never been so sure. 
I can tell a real cowboy from the drugstore kind, clean across Texas. The way he wears his hat will tell you, and the beer that you drink is a surefire giveaway, too. A lot of us drink light beer from Miller. We love the taste, but we surely appreciate that it's got a third less calories than the regular kind. You see, you don't want to be filled up when you're out there punching dogs. Ain't that right, cowboy? I didn't punch that doggy. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Sunday on shift, Ponch enjoys a movie assignment until a deadly menace threatens the cast. Then move over, Smokey. Look out, Dukes. It's Nashville Grab, a world premiere movie. 55,740 in the ballpark tonight. And in right field, as we look at the wide shot of this great Yankee stadium, the groundskeepers have been busy picking up most of the time. It's been money. They, tell has been thrown out there, but we've had some ugly incidents. As we look at Wayne Gross, the new third baseman, Armas was hit by a thrown baseball, fireworks going off in the stands, Reggie stand pinstripes. So I think it's interesting the way the hitters in that last inning tried to stalling tactics, starting with Johnson stepping out on Davis. There were men on base in those situations. Now, both Davis and Gossage uh, can be very conveniently wild. And I'm not saying they're going to throw at anybody, but as this thing moves along, as we look at Fowler and Martin, Steve McCaddy, the starting pitcher tomorrow, uh, they may move some hitters off the plate and try an intimidation factor in return as this series progresses. And I'm not saying they're going to try and hit anybody. Well, I've seen it happen. I remember Sally Hemus fouling off 15 pitches and Walker Cooper saying to him, you want to get on that bad? And Spawn hit him right in the ribs. And it, it's an aggravating, agitating, I guess it's part of Philly ball. He got the job done. A base hit by Milburn on the first pitch by Norris. He's on. It's the kind of a series that you would expect these two teams to play to do everything within the rules to win. Milburn is the guy who, after Dent went out with a fractured bone in his hand, Everybody said he's a utility player who can give you about a week's 10 days of good work. He's been doing it for over a month, and he really has the falter. With the bat, he's been very steady with the glove. Winfield walked in the first inning, bounced out, second to first in the third, line to the center fielder in the fifth. Nobody out. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Yankees three, Oakland one. McCaddy tomorrow for Oakland. Rudy May for the Yankees. High curve ball. It's ball one. Ball just didn't break at all. Winfield takes a good look at out the belly. Norris had a long session on the bench, and you could see him stretching that arm. His elbow may have stiffened up. And in the meantime, Billy Martin and Art Fowler have got a couple of guys thrown in their bullpen. He took something off the pitch. Milburn. Left-hander is Tommy Underhood. Right-hander is the youngster Beard, Dave Beard. Milburn at first, he had a base hit. He's had seven hits in his last nine at-bats. He's got three hits tonight. There he goes. It's popped up in the short center field. Right center, Armas is coming in, makes the play. Heath was coming out of the box for an attempt to throw in case Winfield swung at the pitch and missed. And watch what happens to six foot six inch Winfield on the hit and run. You can see Heath coming forward to throw. Now he's trying to go in a little collision. Incidental contact. Oh, Winfield didn't treat him too easily, did he? I tell you that, Heath showed me something. Even though he didn't have the ball, he was in position to throw, so he was ready. And he would have had to make a tremendous throw because Milburn had an outstanding jump on the pitcher Norris. So once again, those steals and caught stealing statistics sometimes can be misleading. He would have needed the gun to get Milburn going in the second. Here's Jackson. Down the left field line. Coming over hard is Henderson and doesn't have room. 
For those of you tuning in for your local news, it'll be seen immediately after the game, followed by The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, except on the West Coast, where The Tonight Show will be seen at its regular time. I think the thing, Joe, about Reggie Jackson, that so now we're going to have a trip out to the mound by Billy Martin. Norris, maybe to ask how his arm is. He's been really holding that elbow and rubbing it. I think he's having problems with it. He's hurt. He's, he's going to be a blow. He's, he's going to make a change. Marty is getting Springstead, and he looks like he's motion for the left-hander, Underwood. He's stepping up with a long time he spent in the dugout while the delay tactics were going on. And he did throw an awful lot of pitches, especially inning number one, when he walked two Yankees, and they got all three of their runs. So we've got a break in the action here as the new pitcher comes in. So we'll break away and be right back after these messages. Ticket office. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek from beautiful Yankee Stadium where the Yankees are leading Oakland 3-1. to one. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. And this is Channel 4, KNBC Los Angeles. The Yankees, as you see, a 3-1 to one lead. They got those three runs in the first inning after Jerry Mumphrey struck out. Milburn singled to right, Winfield walked, and Reggie Jackson hit a ground ball. To the second baseman, Winfield charging hard. Really put some pressure on the shortstop. They couldn't get Jackson. It was a force play. Gamble walked, and with the bases loaded, Nettles doubled the left center field to drive in three runs. That's been the Yankees scoring. Oakland scored in the fifth after one out. Pichelo single to left. He went to third on a double by Henderson and scored as Dwayne Murphy bounced out to the second baseman. Now you're looking at Milburn at first base. The new pitcher is Underwood. The batter is Reggie Jackson. Down he goes, ball one. We've had all kinds of extracurricular activities in case you're just joining us. It was a delaying tactics. It's Bill, you see Billy Martin, master of the Billy ball. With Murphy on, Cliff Johnson took about a week and a half to bat, ended up with Ron Davis getting wild. He finally had to leave the game. Goose Gossage has come on. And the time that Johnson took forced Norris out of the game. Looked like he stiffened up. Jackson, two balls and a strike. So when these two teams get together, you expect a lot. And we've had it so far tonight, and we look for it again tomorrow. It'll be McCaddy for Oakland. It'll be Rudy May for the Yankees. It's 2 o'clock Eastern time, and then tomorrow night, the Dodgers and the Expos go at it again. Jackson fouls it off. Dodgers won today, 5-1. to one. So there'll be plenty of baseball here on NBC tomorrow. Tom Underwood, a tough pitcher, like his catcher Mike Keith, both formerly Yankees. Underwood's always been somewhat of uh, an enigma to a lot of clubs as to why he's not more successful, Joe. It's a good fastball, curve, slider, pretty good change of, change of pace. Gets behind hitters. Reggie Jackson waiting. Two balls and two strikes, one out. Bottom of the eighth inning. Yankees in front, three to one. Now Jackson's taking time. Jackson is saying he went to his mouth while he was standing on the rubber, I believe. I thought it's against the rules. I'll tell you, we've had more <laughs> meetings than the Teamster Convention. Let's see if he did. Well, it's two and two at any rate. It's high. Three and two. Lou Pinella has come out of the on-deck circle. He'll be the hitter for Oscar Gamble. There you see him. Lemon got him out there in the hurry. He hasn't been announced yet, so he's not officially in the game. Milburn's running. Ball four. Jackson walks. Milburn is second. Lou Pinella will be the batter. You'll hear the fans with Lou Lou. Pinello, when he is announced, Billy may make a change and go to the youngster beer and give him some experience early. We'll see. Your attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, batting for Gamble, 
Number 14, Lou Vanilla. Well, teams try and pitch Reggie Jackson up and in. Underwood came close on the first one. We'll show it to you again. Jackson, who finally got upset this year, and a little talk with his pitching staff, saying, I've been knocked down around here for several years, and nobody ever retaliates. Well, Vanilla is the batter. Jackson's on first. Milburn's the second one out. Full foul, strike one. Vanilla, one for nine, is a pinch hitter. Vanilla, good hitter. Earl Weaver kids him a lot of over at Baltimore. Weaver says Pinella will go to his grave looking for a curveball and lining the single to right. There's a single to right. Here comes Melbourne trying to score. Here's the throw. Got him. A beautiful tag by Heath, but we're going to have an argument. Here comes Al Tabelli, and now here comes Bob Lemon, and Al Tabelli can't understand how he could call him out. Heath with his foot blocked the plate, although the Yankees think he got in. What a magnificent throw by Tony Armas, who possesses as good a throwing arm as there is in baseball. This is the cutoff man, but look at the carry on this ball. Watch the left foot of Heath. Planted for the runner. He says he didn't touch the plate. Here it is from another angle. We should be able to tell better from this, Joe. Heath plants that foot, takes the plate away. Home plate umpire. The Kremigan says you slid right over the plate with your foot. What a beautiful throw and a beautiful job of blocking the plate. So, a throw by Armas, a tag by Heath. And the Yankees do not get the run. There are two outs. And now Pinella. Somebody threw something on the field there. He is going out to get, along with Mike Ferraro, the first base coach. Apparently, he doesn't want the money. What marvelous outfield we play. play. We've seen a Ricky Henderson in the left field corner. Dwayne Murphy, the right and left center field gap. Now just an outstanding throw by Armas. Vanilla singles to right. Jackson stops at second. And Greg Nettles is the batter. There are two outs. Fastball is high. Ball one. On the throw from Armas, Reggie never went to third base because the cutoff man, young Calvin Moore, gave him such a good decoy, he froze Reggie at second base so that he couldn't keep going. And with two outs, you're not going to take many chances. Ball two. That throw got here in a hurry. Heath did an outstanding job of tagging him, and he was in control. He saw the tag when he, he saw the runner at second. Jackson, had he tried to go to third and been thrown out, would have been just criminal. Three balls and no strikes. So Jackson with base running is at second base. Pinellas at first, Nettles is the batter, 3-0, and, oh, and he just may be getting the green light right about here. Oh, uh, this ballpark, you got to believe he will. That short porch and the pull hitter he is. I'll tell you, this outfield for Oakland that everybody raves about has maybe kept this pitching staff in the game. He made four outstanding plays. Breaking ball. Bases are loaded. Dave Remering is the scheduled hitter. Jackson making sure it's ball four. And so he moves on over to third. Pinella goes to second. Nettles is on at first. Reverend had a 233 batting average for 1981. Four home runs. He drove in 17 runs. He's up there with the bases loaded. Two outs. Bottom of the eighth inning. Strike one. Yankees out in front, three to one. Nick Bremican behind the plate has had a busy, busy night. One and one. Bremican, as we look at Jackson, Pinella, and Nettles on the bases, he's had to be umpire, mediator, babysitter.
strike two. One ball, two strikes. Underwood. The one two pitch now. Foul tip. Reverend stays alive. Oakland has actually had more scoring opportunities than the Yankees, although they trail by two. The A's threw eight innings, eight innings and stranded seven. The Yankees threw seven, just four. The two base on balls in the first inning really have come home to haunt Oakland. It is not a strike. Two balls and two strikes. A single by Milburn, a walk to Winfield, a walk to uh, Gamble in that first inning, set it up, and Greg Nettles double the left center field. And that's been the Yankee attack. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Nice play by Heath. Oh, he saved the run. He was like a hockey goalie. He took that right off the groin. Take my word for it. I mean, this is a vicious 55-footer, and he just stays in front of it. Look at that. Down he goes. What a play he made. He's the one guy that Billy Martin wanted to get. He property of the Yankees at one time. Uh, one of the things in that Yankee scouting report said that the, one of the most improved phases of this Oakland game is in catching. 3-2 pitch, runners go, it popped up. More in foul territory, does he have room? Misjudged it, but makes the play. Ended up a foul ball. The umpire called it foul. The umpire down the right field line, Vic Voltaggio. At any rate, the inning over is over, although it looks like he, he's in fair territory when he finishes up, Tony. That's where the ball is when it touches his glove. Voltaggio said it's foul. I'd say three runs were home if it's fair, and he misses it. So at the end of eight, three to one, the Yankees over Oakland, we go to the ninth. While others said the Shah would never fall, one Middle East expert warned of his possible defeat and its effects on oil supplies. Dr. Alvin Cottrell, who's been a consultant to four nations, but only one Wall Street firm, Payne Weber, where the research department distills his information for the Payne Weber broker. Because when investing, getting the right information and getting it first can be the difference between success and failure. Payne Weber, working to get the right information first. Thank you, Payne Weber. Oh, the comforts of home. Color TV. Plays about anywhere. That's fantastic. That's Quasar. Select defrost time. A talking microwave. Select cooking time. Fantastic. But that's Quasar. Did you get it, Daddy? I've got it all on video tape. Oh, oh. Instant replay. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's Quasar. One great idea after another. After another. before 9 a.m. than most people do all day. Hey, First Sergeant. Good morning. We need you in the Army. Well, tomorrow it's game two in both pennant battles. Tony and I will be right here at Yankee Stadium, 2 o'clock Eastern time. The Oakland A's with McCaddy against Rudy May. And then the Expos and the Dodgers in prime time. Dick Enberg and Tom Seaver will be in Los Angeles. And Valenzuela will be the pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. So 2 o'clock Eastern time and Yankees and the A's, Dodgers, Montreal prime time. That's tomorrow right here on NBC. This is Kelvin, Kelvin Moore. He's 0 for 3. It's a strike. Kid's got some power more. 25 home runs in the Pacific Coast League. He's always struck out a lot. One Wonder strike. if the long, excuse me, Joe, the long stand the bench for Gossage for that last inning will stiffen him up. The upper back problem he's had. No, no. <laughs> I don't think it bothers him, Tony. <laughs> Play. 
Billy Martin and the Oakland A's here in the ninth. Broken bat ground ball. Milburn is one out. For those of you tuning in for your local news, it'll be seen immediately after the game, followed by the Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, except on the West Coast, where the Tonight Show will be seen at its regular time. We look at the Yankee bench. The batter is Heath. What a job he did. Defense takes it high, ball one. He literally saved two runs, one on a tag play, and one as he blocked a low curve ball in the dirt. Doesn't get it. The goose is coming on strong. One ball and one strike. Gossage in relief. I notice with nobody on base, they're not stepping out on Gossage either. Strike two. Crowd reacting now. Popped up. Reverend near the stands. He'll have room. Makes the play. Two outs. I don't know how any a right-handed hitter hangs in there against Gossage with those arms and legs and everything else playing. Say there is a fear factor. Not so much at the Second speed, base. but the Eight, reaction to it that you have in the batter's box. If there is a plus in this ball game, if the score stays the same for the Oakland A's. It's that they kept to their composure throughout this game, but it looked like they were going to get blown out after any number one. Mike Norris settled down. Two outs. Strike one. He just blew it by McKay. strike two outs nobody on foul ball one ball two strikes popped up this could be it Winfield coming in Milburn going out Winfield says he'll take it So the Yankees win game one from Oakland by the final score of three to one. The winning pitcher is Tommy John. The loser is Norris. Nettles drove in all three runs. Give Goose Gossage a save. Big ball game for the Yankees as they win three to one. And we'll be right back after these messages. I'll tell you, we never realized golf was such a tough game. Hey, it's a lot easier hitting a quarterback than a little white ball. So us Linksters drink light beer from Miller. Not just because light tastes great, but because it's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're out there trying to get birdies. Yeah, those things move awfully fast. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. win the first game by the score of three to one. The winning pitcher is Tommy John. The loser is Norris. Nettles drove in all three runs. It's a big victory for the Yankees, Tony. Well, we expected pitching from these two teams. We got it. Norris had the early control problems that hurt the open A's. There you see the Goose reacting. He has four saves in all four New York postseason wins. All four saves. Final score, three to one, Yankees over Oakland. <laughs> 